All right, this is an article from about a year ago um, from a science magazine, and they're talking about the speed of light. The speed of light is in, in a vacuum is exactly this number of meters per second. We all know this is a fact. Well, we've been forced to agree it's a ta an effect. We're universally so sure of it that everyone agreed to define a critical unit of length in the universe using the speed of light. So they could, because it's in a vacuum, it just goes the speed of light never slows down. Well, the speed of light is a nice whole number because a meter is defined as the distance traveled by light and da 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 of a second. Okay. Now, however, what if we don't know if this value is exact speed of light? What if I were to tell you no one has to date measured the exact speed that light moves from going from one point to another? Well, they just, it has been done and it's just been disregarded. Okay, my friends, the first thing a physicist will say to you is we all know the speed of light is an exact speed, never changes, doesn't slow down, doesn't speed up. Totally wrong. Scientists have slowed the speed of light, and it remains slowed down. It doesn't speed back up again. Everybody knows it can slow down. That is not a question. They say it speeds back up. No, it doesn't. It says scientists slowed the speed of light. Not only did they slow it, they slowed it down to where it never came back fast again. And this is back in 2015. That's eight years ago. The photons remained traveling at the lower speed even when they returned to free space. The experiment is likely to alter how science looks at light. Maybe science, but not the scientists. They will not change their mind no matter what evidence you produce. Look at this. This is Science ABC. They're saying, can we measure the speed of light, the one-way speed of light? A fair question would be, why has no one ever measured the one-way speed of light? Well, they have done it, and they just disregard it. It seems simple enough, and it is. But the fact is, any method you're thinking of is bound to present a problem. Well, let's just look at the speed of light, and then we'll decide if it's a problem or not. And look at the research that they did in 2015 and see if it's a problem or not. Instead of just dismissing, oh no, it's a big problem, you can't do it, forget about it, it's all over. See, this is BBC News from 2015. They did slow it down, and it stayed slowed down, and I show, the, I, I show it. In the video, I'll show you what they had to say. It's only a couple of minutes long. Okay, they sent photons of light, but they were using full-spectrum light. We use coherent light, which is only a certain frequency. We not only slowed it down, we actually divided the particles apart. <laughs> that's, that is the, that's the top end of physics. All right, listen to this. They say they sent the photons which are individual particles of light. And I have shown those very clearly. They sent them through a special mask, which just means a restriction. It changed the photon's shape and slowed them to less than light speed. When they say it changed their shape, it crushed them into photon particles from neutrinos. And then they never returned to their same speed again. They were slowed down. Okay, they did basically the same thing we did. They put a mask, they call it, which is just like a little filter that sort of opposes the coming, the coming of the light. And what it did was it slowed it down. It, it started back again to be in an open space just like this is, but it is now slower and it's going to run slower. It's never going to speed up back to with the, the speed of light. It has slowed down and it will never recover. They, this is the thing they never understood. That means that anything that's in space that blocks the movement of light is going to slow that light down. That means that everything we're doing in space, based on the fact that light never slows down, is wrong. Okay, virtually all science and all physicists will say the same thing. Light is a constant speed. This is the American Museum of Natural History. No matter how you measure it, the speed of light is always the same. This is from Einstein. Einstein's crucial breakthrough about the nature of light in 1905 can be summed up in a deceptively simple statement. Deceptive is correct. <laughs> the speed of light is constant. <laughs> so what does this sentence really mean? It means nothing. It's because it's wrong. This is the reality of the situation. Nobody ever tested it to see if it was right because Einstein said it. A team of Scottish scientists made light travel slower than the speed of light. And they did just what we did. They sent it through a mask, 
and then the photons remained traveling at the lower speed even when they returned to free space. The experiment is likely to alter how science looks at light. No, it won't, because the scientists will not even look at this. They disregard this completely. It means nothing to them. The truth in science is, is, a, is a farce. Total, they couldn't care less about the truth. It's strictly presenting a point of view, an opinion, and then supporting it with as much nonsense as you can possibly slather on top. This is a real delusional disaster. What is the redshift? The redshift is the key concept. This is the key thing for astrophysics. The term can be understood literally. The wavelength of the light is stretched. All right? So the light seems as shifted towards the red part of the spectrum. And they say there's planets out here pulling that light away, shifting it. That means everything is expanding out. No, it isn't. It, what is shifting is it's spinning fast and it's hitting things and it's just slowing down as it comes towards the Earth. Otherwise, we would be the center of the universe because everything around of us is going away, they say, because it's red shifting. That, what it really is, is everything coming towards us is just slowing down as it filters its way through all of the debris that's in front of it, which is a ton. Okay, what they did in the Scottish researchers is they put a mask in front, so it sort of filters the light through and opposes it. And they say the photons changed shape and then they stayed in this slower phase after they came through. Well, they went back to looking like normal light, but they didn't speed up. And the only reason they changed shape is because they're stacking up against themselves prior to hitting the mask. Okay, let's sum it up here. They put their particle through a mask, which I just showed you what a mask sort of just holds it back a little bit. And they will change shape as they're approaching the mass. Yes, it says to change the photon shape and it slowed them down. And then the photons remain going slower even when they return to free space, which was here. So they look back to normal again, only they're just traveling slower now. That's what the redshift is. Okay, the reason I say we're never going to get anywhere in science is because of people like this guy right here. I've been trying to work with him for five or six years. He refuses to answer any of my questions. He always asks, if you have any questions, ask him. I show the particles he's looking for. They do precisely what they're supposed to do. He's talking for Fermilab. They're one of the biggest particle accelerators in the world. And then they admit the quantum foam, empty space, isn't empty. Subatomic particles winking in and out of existence everywhere in the universe. And the reason they're winking out, in and out, because other particles are hitting them light. And then we say, oh, that light is not obstructed by anything. It's coming through a vacuum. We know it's not a vacuum. We know it's not empty. We know it winks in and out of, and we're saying those light particles are traveling 186,000 miles a second, case closed, and that's why it's 350 light years to whatever. It's total nonsense. Absolutely. And they know it's nonsense. It doesn't matter. That's the problem. That's what bothers me the most. Truth has no place in science anymore. None. Okay, this is pulsed red laser. Now, there is a particle in here. You can't see it yet. It doesn't display until it really gets energetic. And it will display, and I will show you. These are all gases in the air, oxygen, nitrogen, so forth. They still have electrons attached to them, which are energetic particles. You bump into them, they bump back. It's push to shove. This gets very bright. These get kind of bright because they're just getting pushed out of the way. It's just a, a nature of any time you push an electron against an electron, you will get a glow. That is energy. And it's the cashmere effect. It's pushing one energetic level against another energetic level. You end up with energy. <laughs> and any time you see a glow, it's energy. I think I showed you the article. This is the black particle. That's the glowy particle. We found both. We found them, and they are part of light. We work with light, not with protons. Protons create a zoo of particles, but they every one of them starts with one of these two particles, and two of them together make what we always consider to be an electron. All right, the black we never knew about before. That's the dark matter they've been looking about forever. And it's right there, so it's attached to the white. But the white is always coats the black, completely coats it. Even though 
you're looking at this, they're attached side by side, but we're down to where you can't get any smaller than this. This is, this is the elemental particles, and the two of these together, which they know are the smallest particles they can ever find, together make an electron. Two electrons together make a photon. And then it goes up from there. there here's their particle zoo. All right, they take huge particles, boom, and billions of particles go flying. And they dig for literally for years to find the smallest ones. And the, just which is exactly what I showed you is the light. All right. And the light can break apart exactly what I showed you to form individual balls like this, which are the glowy one and the dark, which is a muon electron neutrino, basically is what it is. And then some of them glue together like this. So then you get big chunks and all because they're starting with huge things. We started with light, so we end up, we're never going to get to those huge things. We don't need all these huge things. We have exactly what we need, and they are these tiny things, the little black balls and the white balls. And right here, because we're working with light, we were able to do what they wanted to do, and they still can't do at Fermilab or CERN, is to take muon neutrinos which are attached to electron neutrinos and strip the muon away and strip the white showers away, which we can do all day long. And I believe there's a lot of energy there. I could be wrong, but I do believe there's a lot of energy there. And they cannot do this. All they get is a pile of debris. And then they sort through and they say, oh, if we could do this all day long, we could make huge... The things they're working with are just absolutely incredibly large and cumbersome. What I could do, if this works, is put it in this box like this. And this would be the... This is as simple as it is inside. You get a laser through a venturi with a solar panel collecting it. As simple as that. Right there. You collect all that energy and then feed a little bit back to keep your laser going, and then walk through the woods with your little box and do anything you want. And all any kind of electricity you want come out of here. And I think you get enough to run a house, a car, anything you want, and something maybe as small as that. I'm not sure. I've been doing this a long time. This was back for the electron flood theory. The paper, the last paper I wrote was in 2019. You know, you keep writing papers, writing papers, nobody reads them. <laughs> so, you know... Even the videos that I show them, and there's no interest. I, a few people are interested, but they're not, the people that should be interested have no concern for truth whatsoever that I can find. None. And I mean it's pervasive. Academia is just littered with closed minds that will not allow anything to be discussed unless it conforms to their ideas and bolsters them in their academic standing. Otherwise, to engage in conversation with somebody like me who can literally destroy them, I don't want to. I want to discuss. I don't want to destroy anybody, but they don't have any idea what's out in space. Look at this. This is, this is right in our own neighborhood, and this is just taken with a cell phone. These are magnetic fields and pushing to shove lines. You see these? These things are all pushing against, and they're all dipoles, black and white. You see the black and white? That is my theory. I've had it for years, and well, over 50 years. It's, they have to be dipoles. And here's what the Russians did. They made that black hole in space, and they created all of the little white electrons trying to get into it. These are charged particles in a vacuum chamber in space in close to zero gravity. And the only reason you can tell it's not zero gravity because it's a little bit squished. <laughs> if it was totally 100% out in the midst where there was nothing pulling on it, it's still pulling on it this way from the Earth because the Earth is saturated with dark matter. It has to be. It pulls the electrons down as fast as they... Elect, lightning, zzz, electricity, boom, right to ground. Static, boom, right to ground. You ground everything. Ground is saturated with dark matter. It has to be. It wants every electron that it can get to drop right to ground. That's the only reason all of this stuff is gravity is this stuff right here.